This is Wild Chronicles. I'm Boyd Matson. Beneath the Arctic ice, frigid water simmers with sound. For a brief time during the spring, strange animal noises fill the sea, like an orchestra tuning up before a performance. A team from Cornell University's Lab of Ornithology has come here to Admiralty Inlet in the Canadian Arctic to record some of this otherworldly music. They're interested in bowhead and beluga whales, bearded and ring seals. And one particularly elusive denizen of the region, the narwhal. The complex sounds of this tusk wonder of the high Arctic have seldom been documented. The Lab of Ornithology is home to the Macaulay Library, a multimedia resource for the study of animal behavior. The Bioacoustic Research Unit is involved in the study of marine acoustics. Cameraman David Brown has done a lot of underwater filming. He knows getting good pictures of a narwhal presents a tough challenge. Narwhal only occur in the Arctic. By definition, it's a difficult place to film. It's an extreme environment. Everything has to be perfect. You have to have the whales, you have to have the weather, and the weather includes ice conditions. Check my levels on that one. That's out of control. Mark Dansker has conducted research on animal behavior from Panama to Scandinavia. The Arctic water is full of incredibly unusual sounds. The narwhal beluga, bearded seals, on top of the crackling ice and the distant bowheads. It's just an incredible soundscape. The marine mammals they're looking for congregate along the icy edge of Admiralty Inlet, waiting for the ice to break up before heading in to feeding and breeding grounds. While the team waits for the whales to show up, they document ringed seals and king eiders, ocean-going birds that soar across the frozen waves of ice. Frequent polar bear sightings add excitement to the location. One night we found a polar bear hunting along the ice, and it would detect a seal just underneath the snow, pounce down, shatter through the ice and the snow that was over the seal's pupping den, and then try to grab a seal before it made it down through its breathing hole into the ocean. The warmth of the sun finally begins to break up the ice but there's still no clear route to the open sea, and thus no way for the team to record the whales. Finally, the team decides to take a chance on another location miles away. This is Lancaster Sound, but it's also covered with ice too solidly packed to find the whales. However, that night, the wind reverses itself and pushes the ice out to sea. The following evening reveals a very different landscape. The sea ice is gone, leaving a calm expanse of open water glimmering beneath the midnight sun. And then, whales appear. First sighted are belugas, called the canaries of the sea, because of the chirping and whistling sounds they make to communicate. But belugas are only a prelude to the main event, the arrival of narwhals. They're similar to belugas in size and shape, but there's one characteristic that sets them apart, a single giant tooth possessed by the males. Before the animal was known to science, narwhal tusks were marketed in Europe as unicorn horns. David braves the 28 degree water. Two tuskless female narwhal. 
animal's approach. A hydrophone, or underwater microphone, is lowered from the ice edge to record the sounds of these mysterious creatures. The male comes over to investigate the hydrophone, bombarding it with intense clicks. The rapid fire clicks bounce off a scanned object to create a detailed acoustic picture. The whistles and growls and trills are not sonar. They are how the narwhal communicate. Scientists don't know what each sound means as yet, but narwhal may be able to recognize individuals by voice, just as we do or they may use them to keep track of each other. Taking advantage of the clear weather, the team works for two straight days capturing images and sounds of these beautiful, bizarre animals. Then, as it often does in the Arctic, the weather changes overnight. The wind shifts, snow falls, and broken ice from miles offshore moves in. The advancing ice closes the opportunity to record the whales. But the narwhal, with their echolocation perfectly adapted to the icy environment, will have no trouble finding open water. And the team can rest, knowing that they've recorded a unique array of sounds from this beguiling and mysterious animal.